PCS okay. members and friends uh, to our PCS IBS seminar. Today, we have a pleasure of hosting Dr. Jonah kudler flam from uh, Princeton University. And our scientific host uh, today is uh, Dario. So I would ask Dario to introduce our speaker. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. Yeah, it's a great pleasure to have Jonah today from, uh, from US. And uh, we thank him already for being here at 9 p.m. in his time, which is pretty late. Uh, so, yeah, as uh, Tilen anticipated, I'm going to introduce a little bit our speaker. So, is, uh, Jonah is a, let's say, is a young postdoc. This is, he's doing right now his first postdoc in IAS and Princeton. Uh, and this postdoc started uh, last year in uh, September. He got his bachelor degree in 2017 from Colgate University. Then he moved to Chicago, where he did both the master and the PhD uh, under the supervision of uh, Shinsei Ryu. Uh, and he got a PhD in 2022, and after that he moved to Princeton. So his research interests uh, are, let's say, at the boundary between quantum information and gravity, and uh, yeah, he's working on quantum many body physics and its connection to, for example, black holes physics and stuff like that. And today he's going to talk about non-Hermitian random matrix theory and uh, how we can, let's say, introduce the notion of quantum chaos in dissipative system from non-Hermitian random matrix theory viewpoint. So, Jonah, I think the floor uh, is all yours, and you can start. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the invitation, and uh, also for everyone who may have came twice when I messed up the time. So, thank you all for coming again. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about um, some recent work with uh, uh, Giorgio uh, Cipolloni. This is spelled wrong, I just realized. But uh, some two papers that uh, we've released. So one last year, this first paper, and then a more recent paper on the archive. Um, yeah, so uh, please interrupt me at any time. Um, so let me first uh, review uh, the notion of thermalization and normal uh, quantum physics, meaning permission quantum physics and closed quantum systems. So first, in uh, classical thermodynamics, uh, sorry, let me try to move this thing. Okay. Uh, in classical thermodynamics, um, one assumes the ergodic hypothesis, which asserts that time spent in regions of phase space is proportional to the volume of that region. And uh, this is justified by uh, chaotic behavior of classical dynamics and nonlinear dynamics. And um, we can attribute this to the emergence of statistical physics um, and why statistical physics work so well. Uh, there's some initial issues in closed uh, quantum systems because we don't really have the notion of ergodicity of dynamics, um, but we still believe that thermal dynamics, uh, thermal physics should still emerge. So, you know, just looking around our world, which is quantum, we still know that thermal physics holds, but uh, the the linear dynamics of Schrodinger equation make this a bit uh, more challenging to um, to explain. So, understanding um, how thermalization um, emerges in quantum physics uh, and other related ideas uh, tend to be referred to as quantum chaos. Uh, though I don't have a, a really unique definition of this, if you ask different people, people might call uh, different things quantum chaos. Um, so I'm going to first review a few uh, key signatures of quantum chaos, some things people talk about related to quantum chaos, um, and then I'll move to uh, the more exploratory side of things, which is uh, uh, dissipative quantum chaos or chaos in open quantum systems um, um, and maybe systems where you uh, are doing measurements. So there's three things I will discuss, three signatures. Uh, the first uh, is very standard. It's the spectral statistics of your theory, um, the like energy eigen levels. Uh, the second is the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. And the third is uh, entanglement, so a more quantum information uh, look at uh, at thermalization. 
And so the entanglement of typical states, which is sometimes called the page curve. So these will be the three topics today. Um, mainly we'll talk about two and three, but you know, one is so important that I shouldn't have, I shouldn't skip it. Okay, so uh, the BGS conjecture um, states that the energy spectra of time reversal invariant quantum systems who's uh, has some classical limit um, that are chaotic obey uh, GOE statistics. So this is um, a connection between uh, many body quantum physics and random matrix theory. So GOE is the Gaussian uh, orthogonal ensemble. So th this is a, a very deep connection between statistical physics and random matrix theory and uh, building on really the basis of where random matrix theory originally came from, which is uh, Eugene Wigner's insights that um, that the energy uh, the energy levels of heavy nuclei uh, could be described by a random matrix. So uh, one signature is that um, if you look at the nearest neighbor level spacing, so you have a whole energy spectrum, and if you just look at the statistics of how far away um, neighboring energy levels are, uh, the statistics obey uh, Wigner-Dyson statistics, which is a uh, uh, given in on this left curve. So, or this histogram on the left is the energy level gaps of of just a of just looking at um, single particle um, on this uh, Sinai billiards, which is this picture on the right. So we have this classically chaotic motion where um, a ball is bouncing around and hitting the circle and hitting the edge. Um, and this has this is classically chaotic. And when you uh, quantize the particle on this space, um, the energy levels obey uh, uh, these random matrix-like statistics which have uh, level repulsion, which means that um, the, the gaps between energies don't like to be close to each other. So you can see that uh, this goes all the way down to zero uh, when you get to the energy level is uh, energy gaps are zero. This is different than integrable systems, or if you had just you know randomly chosen a set of n eigenvalues, uh, which would obey uh, Poisson statistics, which is given by this dotted curve. Yeah, so I'm going to quick, I'll move on, but if things are going uh, fast, please stop me. Um, so the second thing is the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, which asserts that uh, if you, instead of looking at the energy eigenvalues, if you look at the energy eigenstates uh, for, for Hamiltonians that uh, uh, obey quantum chaos, they appear thermal in a specific sense. So if I take um two energy eigenvectors uh, ei and ej and i look at uh the matrix element for o where o is some simple operator you should think of like a few like an operator like a few body operator or maybe a sum of a few body operators um but if this is you know relatively simple um then there will this will come with two pieces uh the first piece is this diagonal piece, so there's a delta ij, and a smooth function of the energy. And so um, this is really giving you like the thermal piece of, of the, uh, the expectation value. So, you know, if this is like the local uh, number of particles, this is like uh, the f will be telling you what the expectation value of the number of particles is. And this doesn't, this changes smoothly with the energy or any other thermodynamic parameters. And importantly, there's this uh, additional piece uh, that is entropically suppressed. So it's exponentially suppressed in the entropy of the system. And here's another smooth function. And then R is just some order one pseudo random matrix that we're not going to specify. But the important piece is that these are entropically suppressed. So the fluctuations away from just uh, you know pure thermal behavior and energy eigenstates is is very small. 
uh, when you go to large large systems. Right. So yeah, this is uh, one explanation of uh, the emergence of thermal behavior. Uh, and in particular, if you don't start in an energy eigenstate, but you start in some, um, you start in some generic state, uh, you know, psi of zero, and then evolve with a Hamiltonian. If your system obeys uh, eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, then at late times the uh, expectation value of your of your simple operator will approach the microcanonical ensemble answer. Right. the The final um, the final uh, diagnostic of quantum chaos is the entanglement entropy of of eigenstates or the page curve. So we can consider um, the most random possible matrix or the most chaotic kind of matrix might be um, drawn from um, a, a random matrix distribution such as uh, GUE, the Gaussian unitary ensemble. Uh, so Gaussian unitary ensemble, we take um, uh, each matrix element of H is going to be uh, Gaussian uh, I, uh, independent and identically distributed Gaussian uh, numbers with the only constraint being that H is Hermitian. Um, so, you know, the upper triangular is, is fixed. And so the, the energy eigenstates of uh, GUA matrix are actually har, har distributed. So um, it's like taking uh, some fixed, some fixed vector, say the state of all spin up, and then applying a completely random unitary matrix to it. So uh, one thing you can do when you have such an eigenstate, and these eigenstates can be thought of as, um, as models of eigenstates of chaotic Hamiltonians. And so if you part we can partition the Hilbert space uh, into, into two regions. Uh, we have region A and region B that uh, in total make up this full vector. And we can ask about the reduced state on A. And so the reduced density matrix, rho A is given by the, the trace over B. So we, we just forget about everything in, in region B of such an eigenstate. And then you can compute the von Neumann entropy of a typical eigenstate um, and this is what was done by Page, and you get, uh, and so the, sorry, the von Neumann entropy is minus trace of rho log rho. Um, it's just the quantum version of the entropy. And you get something uh, that looks like this, which is log of the dimension of your, of your sub-Hilbert space of, so dA is the dimension of H sub A, and dB is the dimension of H sub B. And you get something like this, log of dA minus dA over 2 uh, dB. The largest possible amount of entanglement uh, of, of von Neumann entropy is just log dA. This is an upper bound. Um, and what this is saying is that uh, typical uh, eigenstates uh, nearly saturate the, this bound. So they nearly, um, um, so they're nearly uh, like maximally entangled. And this is another version of thermalization. Uh, you can think of uh, your subsystem on A has been uh, thermalized by a bath, where you, B is is like a bath. And because we don't, if we don't have information about B, the um, the state on A is uh, becomes almost completely uh, thermal, or there's just uh, and nearly maximally mixed, which is like a completely classical distribution. So, so a, a, a system B is is acting as a thermal bath for a system A, even though the whole thing uh, will evolve unitarily. Can I have a quick question? Yes, please. So, is this uh, the property of the von Neumann entropy come from the high randomly distributed, uh, right? Yeah, so 
Um, yes, yeah, so this this exact formula is is after uh, performing some ensemble average over these these on uh, these uh, random matrices or the random unitaries. And yeah, the the fact that it it grows as log of the dimension, uh, which is like a, which is is volume law. So log of the dimension is like the number of qubits. This is a generic thing that's seen in uh, in high energy eigenstates of of chaotic Hamiltonians. Um, the nice thing about using uh, these completely uh, random vectors is that th we can actually compute things in them analytically and uh, and these model well uh, these model well high energy eigenstates. Thank you. I th yeah, okay, so I think I said this, that this implies that the density matrix on, on just region A is nearly maximally mixed. So it nearly just looks like the identity matrix, um, which means that it's it's being thermalized by being, uh, in, by interacting with or by being entangled with uh, system B. Okay, so this is the review of just Hermitian physics and certain diagnostics. Uh, are there any more questions before I move to uh, non-Hermitian physics? It seems not, so please continue. Okay. Um, so in open quantum systems, say you have a system coupled to a bath, or maybe you have a uh, system and then there's some observer doing some measurements on the system. Um, the dynamics are no longer uh, unitary and uh, in turn, they're, they're not really governed by a Hermitian Hamiltonian. And uh, so relaxing Hermeticity of a Hamiltonian um, and and studying you know, the, the phenomena that come out of it has, has led to uh, a bunch of interesting um, discoveries. I have an incomplete uh, list here, but here uh, uh, there's something, some topological physics, this non-Hermitian skin effect, there's new symmetries, phase transitions, replica symmetry breaking. Okay, there's a, there's a lot of uh, active research going into non-Hermitian physics in, in recent years. Um, and it's just a natural question to ask how how many body quantum chaos uh, manifests in non-Hermitian systems. So there's been so much work on uh, understanding chaos in, in, in these Hamiltonian systems, but it's now natural to ask, uh, how do these, do these uh, lessons survive when we relax the notion of Hermeticity? And as it turns out, all three of these signatures that I discussed uh, are significantly modified uh, when you relax um, hermeticity. Uh, first, the the eigenvalue spectrum um, and the level statistics are quite different. As you can imagine, a Hermitian matrix does not have a real energy eigenvalues generically, and so there is going to be um, uh, there's going to be a very different behavior of level statistics. Um, and then, Oh yeah, and this this has a long history as of understanding the level statistics of uh, of non-Hermitian systems. Um, but what I'll mainly talk about are the two the the second and third uh, signatures, and uh, which are the topics of these recent works. Which is that there's no eigenstate thermalization in a certain sense, and the entanglement entropy no longer has this volume law kind of thermal like behavior. Instead, it has something that can sort of be thought of as an area law. So something that's um, the entanglement entropy of a subsystem uh, is is uh, is not growing with system size. Probably this is something that you are going to explain later, but just to spoil, do you have a, uh, let's say, a, uh, can I say, a, a simple uh, way to explain? I mean, one would expect that in, let's say, um, 
in dissipative case, you have even more, let's say, entropy. So do you understand why instead the entanglement entropy is lower somehow, it become area low? Uh, yeah. Um, probably something that you're going to explain later. So if you want, we can. No, it's 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 good to address now. Um, so you what you, there's a there's a caveat to this statement of area law entanglement entropy because there's different ways of defining uh what we mean by uh entropy for these non-hermitian systems it's mm -hmm. it was sort of unique for uh the hermitian case where we uh understand what density matrices are and entropy and what you know what von neumann entropy means in a in a very operational way mm -hmm. i'm going to be using a a kind of weird looking definition of entanglement entropy and a weird because i'm using a strand, sort of weird definition of a density matrix I see. Um, and it's it's not immediately clear to me uh what what it means to have area long entanglement so I, I actually the physical meaning of this third thing is uh i mean and the second thing i think there's in terms of interpretation there's there's something left to be understood and let me let me ask another thing, and then you go ahead. Uh, for this uh, non-standard, uh, let's say, definition of entanglement entropy, you have uh, some bound. So you can say if you are close to the maximal or far to the maximal, you have some bound, right? Mm -hmm. Which is probably based on the Ginebra ensemble, I guess, right? Maybe. Uh, wait, more. sorry, for the Hermitian case or non-Hermitian case? Uh, no, I mean, my guess is that when you go to the non-Hermitian case, uh, what uh, before was the R random and so on, become uh, something based on the Ginebra ensemble, am I right? Right, yeah. So, so yeah, so for Again, example... Probably I'm spoiling something that you are going to discuss later, right? Uh, no. it's good, yeah, it's good, but it's good to spoil. Um, okay. So, um, I mentioned like GUE matrix before as modeling... Uh, right uh these uh chaotic systems closed quantum systems which right. is like the most the which is the most structureless uh kind of hamiltonian that right. is still permission and uh, and if you relax hermeticity the most structureless thing you can have is this Ginebra matrix and so these right. this and so this is what we're going to be studying is the eigenvectors of Geneva matrices. Ah, okay. And, and that can give you a bound of the maximal, let's say, entropy, entanglement entropy that you can have in this case. Uh, so it won't it won't saturate a bound. So in the in the Hermitian case. It it come this pages formula comes very close to saturating. Exactly. The bound. Yeah, that was my question. Yeah. But Geneva, you still have the same bound. Uh, which is like log of the dimension, but Ginebra nice. matrices just don't come close to saturating the bound. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. May I ask, uh, uh, before we move further, may I ask kind of uh, immature question? Uh, you uh, mentioned that uh, open quantum systems are not uh, governed by Hermitian Hamiltonian, but is it obvious that uh, any open quantum system is governed by non-Hermitian Hamiltonian, or uh, it's a kind of subclass of open systems So what? Uh, I mean, uh, you beforehand, uh, in the previous view graph, you showed this situation A plus B. If you consider only system A, it is open. C can, yeah. You, yeah. can you tell that it is governed by uh, non-Hermitian Hamiltonian? Good. Uh... Yeah. So, so generic. So generically. Uh, yeah. So, so let's see. So, if yes. So, so a case that's studied been studied for a long time is is if you have some if a is small and it's coupled to some large bath and some especially if you assume uh, like Markovianity of the bath, uh, then. Uh, the the dynamics of the system just following like normal rules of quantum mechanics is is uh, you get like uh, Lindblad evolution, um, where you have where I mean so it's it's effectively like doing some uh, some Hamiltonian normal Hermitian Hamiltonian dynamics on the larger thing and then forgetting about part of it, um, but a Lindbladian is is a non Hermitian uh, matrix for example. But it's uh, not Hamiltonian as well, right? Oh, that's not a Hamiltonian, yeah. No, because uh, when you speak about Hamiltonian, in a sense, you 
uh, thing that it is uh, each uh, system is described by some uh, wave function or some uh, you know state in a Hilbert space. While for open system you need density matrix. I uh, that's right. Yeah, you, there's also interpretations of of um of just evolving using normal like e to the i h t on some some vector. Uh, mm -hmm. when h if h is uh, is non Hermitian. Uh, this is like uh, it's been interpreted as 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 doing uh, continuous like measurements of the system. So it's like following a single quantum trajectory. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is, so th there's different. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, admittedly, I actually don't uh, know all of the all of the ways these the, like non Hermitian uh, Hamiltonians have been used in dynamics. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm exactly where each one is uh is um applicable uh so yeah basically we're just asking two basic questions let's just assume we have some structureless non-hermitian matrix uh okay. maybe I uh, maybe i can have some comment please so uh, with open quantum system you can have the lean blood equation uh, but there's two parts so you have one part from the contribution of quantum jump. If mm -hmm. you ignore the quantum jump, then you effectively can say that you have to drive in the system by uh, effectively uh, non-hermitian Hamiltonian. But you, you need to ignore the quantum jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, let, let, let's continue. I'm sorry. No, uh, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. We have another question from Alexei. Yeah, a simple question. So if Geneva ensemble doesn't saturate the page curve in terms of entanglement, is it known which non-Hermitian ensemble does? Or would it automatically reduce to a Hermitian case? It may require um, yeah, some, some special uh, symmetry in the matrix that, that may reduce it to Hermitian or, or pseudo Hermitian? I haven't thought about this, but it's a good question. Uh, well, maybe a related question is then, yeah, I mean, like what, what ensemble, what non-Hermitian ensemble would maximize the entanglement entropy? Uh, like, is there any idea what, what properties would you need to, I mean, apart obviously from Hermeticity because that does the job. Right. Um, yeah, like what is the most you could relax while, while, while still uh, while still uh, saturating this this entropy, I don't know the answer. It's a it's an interesting question. So, okay, so. So now introducing uh, the non-Hermitian matrices that have been alluded to. Uh, so the eigenvalues of a non-Hermitian non matrix are, are generically complex. Um, so the global density of states are is a very non-universal thing, even in Hermitian systems. But uh, for example, for uh, IID non-Hermitian matrices, uh, for lar as we make n where n is where the matrix is n by n, um, uh, these these matrices will satisfy the uh, so-called circular law. So, in the uh, complex plane, the uh, eigenvalues of the matrix will will uniformly uh, cover the unit disk. Uh, if the you know assume assuming I've appropriately uh, normalized my Hamiltonian. So this is like the non-Hermitian analog of the semicircle law for uh, uh, random matrices, uh, Hermitian random matrices. So, okay, in contrast to uh, the global spectra, which is uh, usually non-universal, the, the universal uh, parts of, of uh, random matrix theory and of, of chaotic systems, it comes from the level statistics. And so this plot has been taken from this second paper by Ackman. Oh, excuse me, may I ask a question about the ensemble? So uh, in order to uh, get uh, usual uh, 
Wigner Dyson matrix. I can take a matrix which is diagonal with, let's say, Wigner Dyson spectrum and then rotate it by uh, arbitrary unitary uh, rotation. So here, uh, I also can uh, take uh, some diagonal matrix with, uh, with some complex uh, eigenvalues. Are you assuming that this uh, complex uh, imaginary parts are, have the same sign or you allow both signs and things like that? And in principle, can you get your, uh, uh, your ensemble by uh, just unitary rotation of uh, uh, diagonal matrix? Um, I don't know if it's a diagonal matrix, but I, I'm going to all, it may be clear in a future slide, I'm going to have what a unitary uh, rotation brings you to an upper triangular matrix with a certain structure. Okay. Uh, that, that might be clear. Yeah, so the, the construction of these non-Hermitian matrices that I'm saying have the circular law are we just start with a, a matrix where each element is is IID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also, yeah, if, uh, so my collaborator, I think might be in the audience, Giorgio, and uh, he's the uh, super random matrix expert. So if he ever th thinks that I'm saying something wrong, uh, Giorgio, please interrupt me. Um, so, uh, so in so yeah, so in contrast to the global statistics, like the the expectation value of the density, uh, local statistics, which is like correlations between like density density correlations, are universal. And so, in uh, non Hermitian systems, uh, they if S is like the distance, like the Euclidean distance, um, between two eigenvalues. There's a level repulsion that goes like S cubed, uh, regardless of uh, the symmetries. Um, so remember that it went like S to the beta, where beta is this uh, uh, this parameter that tells you if it, it's one, two, or four for the the different classical uh, random matrix ensembles for Hermitian systems. But here it's always just S cubed. Um, so here the real complex and quaternion uh, Geneva ensembles just all have this the same form. Is there any effective uh, column gas statistics, uh, column gas model like in uh, for in Dyson case that describes this? Is it two D column gas? Yeah, I think there's a there's a two D uh, Coulomb gas description of this. And anybody really made the calculation uh, on on this basis? Can you refer to some paper? Um. Yeah, I can't. I can't off the top of my head, but I I can certainly do that later. Uh, I probably should have written such a thing. Yeah. Uh, or again, I can appeal to Giorgio, who could who could send something in the chat as I talk. Uh, yes, like so. Uh, hi, I'm Giorgio. <laughs> uh, Yes, like so for beta equal two is the same as the Coulomb gas with quadratic potential. But like for beta equal one and beta equal four is slightly different because like if you look at the spectrum of random matrices with real or complex entry, then the real axis has a special role. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, in the real case, the eigenvalues are like symmetric with respect to the real axis, and then there is a, an accumulation on the real axis. But mm -hmm. for Coulomb gas, there is no such a thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, for standard Coulomb gas, I think if you put some like charges, uh, maybe like you can get the same effect. But if you mm -hmm. just look at log interaction with the quadratic potential, that then is slightly different. Only in the complex case in beta equal two is the same. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question. I mean, typically, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, Ake's book, you, when you consider the standard uh, Hermitian cases, you can understand the exponents by studying, let's say, the, the two level system, because at that moment uh, you have like uh, two levels that are gonna very close to each other. So you can study the two level systems and somehow the power, the, the, the power of, of the repulsion 
you can compute from the number of parameters that you have to fine tune in order to make the level crossing. Uh, so you can you can see that GOE you have less constraints. So let's say the repulsion is stronger because you need more fine tuning in order to do the level crossing and so on. Is there a similar way to understand the power cube uh, in, in this case? Um, good question. It's... Maybe the question is a game for both. Eh? I mean, I, I, I keep this uh, open format in which both can, can answer. Yeah, I, I, my initial gut, and okay, I'm just gonna guess is that it, it some something about that must break down because it's it's universal for real complex and quaternion, so it's it's not really just a, a level count. Uh, it's not it can't be just a parameter counting uh, somehow, or else we would expect some some beta dependence. Uh, no, yeah, I mean that, I'm not aware yeah. of. I, I, yeah, not not aware of such a argument, but okay, I, maybe just our ignorance that that nobody yeah. would. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, let me move to uh, eigenstate thermalization. Uh, so I'm just repeating the same equation I had before, which says that these matrix elements of, of so-called simple operators have this thermal form with entropically suppressed uh, off-diagonal elements. So, so one thing we can do is just, uh, you know, plug in your favorite uh, Hamiltonian system or no, sorry, uh, non-Hermitian system and, and just plot to see what, what we get for uh, these energy eigenstates or these matrix elements. So on the left is a very familiar looking plot for uh, some system obeying ETH. This is for uh, the normal uh, Sochdev-Yekatayev model. And so you can clearly see that as uh, um, that along the diagonal, you have this uh, very clear um, large values of uh, expectation values. And these are like the microcanonical values. And then there's some noise on the off diagonals, just some suppression. Up that, but it's uh, exponentially suppressed. Uh, the the lighter the lighter color is is just much smaller numbers. Um, but if you were to do the same thing with uh, a non-Hermitian version of the SYK model, which I've written down the Hamiltonian here, uh, you actually just you still see some stuff on the diagonal that like it clearly looks different, but it's a quite a mess off of the diagonal. So you get uh, a whole lot of noise, and it doesn't look like it's entropically suppressed. So this is the first. Uh, uh, sorry, two two questions. One probably trivial, the other a little bit less. Hopefully, I mean the the operator that you are taking is the product of two psi's in this case. Uh? Yeah, yeah, it's like number operator. Yeah. Okay, and the other, so this was the slightly less trivial. The probably one, the probably trivial one. Is it clear that uh, in the non-Hermitian case, these quantities remain real? Remain real. Real or uh, I mean, what? Oh are no, I've taken absolute values here. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, yeah. I've I've swept some some of those details under the rug. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. So here, these size are my Rana fermions, and in the yeah, I should explain this model. Uh, um, the J's are are Gaussian random variables, and uh. The normal SYK model would just have these J's, but uh, uh, um, you can add some some term that breaks the hermeticity where M is another, uh, a bunch of other uh, Gaussian random variables. So, okay. Yeah, uh, Dario and collaborators have worked a lot on, on this model and found interesting effects. So, um, this is just some some numerical observation. Um, and to explain the numerical observations, we can appeal to uh, this complex Genebra ensemble uh, that I uh, discussed earlier, where we just, instead of having to worry about uh, the fermions and maybe the more detailed uh, system, we can we can just make it maximally random. Um, 
a crucial uh, piece um, of non-Hermitian of uh, non-Hermitian matrices is that their left and right eigenvectors uh, are not the same. So in her in the Hermitian case, the left and right eigenvectors are related just by the complex uh, conjugation, but uh, for non-Hermitian matrices, left and right eigenvectors are uh, are not the same, and uh, but we can still form what's called a biorthonormal basis. So we take left eigenvectors overlap with right eigenvectors to get delta ij. Um, and very importantly, right eigenvectors uh, themselves and left eigenvectors themselves do not form uh, uh, base uh, orthonormal bases, bases. So rj with ri will be uh, not proportional to you know delta ij. And so these overlap matrices, these OIJs, which is overlap of R's with themselves times L's with themselves, is uh, is going to play a big role. So the statistics of these overlaps have been uh, studied for a long time, first by Chalker and Malik. Um, and if we just consider the overlap of uh, us, uh, for R I equals J, this uh, overlap is is quite large. It scales with n, so n is the size of the matrix. You know, if this was Hermitian, this would just be the number one. Uh, but now it uh, scales with n. It also has eigenvalue dependence. So one minus lambda is the uh, lambda one squared, which where lambda is the eigenvalue. And then uh, it was proven in uh, this paper that the actual full distribution of 011 one, one, uh, goes like has this gamma two in the denominator where gamma two is is a distribution uh, with that goes like x e to the minus x. So so much is known about these OIJs and uh, they're you know intrinsically a non-Hermitian quantity. Uh, can I ask uh, what is the definition of x here? Oh yeah. Uh, so, so uh, gamma two is a is a random variable, and and that's I'm defining the the probability density function as uh, you know gamma two of x. So you're just sampling from this uh, from this curve. It looks like uh, let's see, I can draw. It looks like you know this, and so. Um, yeah, so where x would be this. So we're just, it's just a random variable where we're just sampling from here in this distribution. And it should depend on Hamiltonian, right? Uh, this depends on the Hamiltonian. Uh, but And here we've uh, assumed a complex Ginebra ensemble. So where, okay. where we can compute things. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is just the model. Now, uh, a curiosity. Technically speaking, the let's say, well, maybe I remember wrong my own paper, but uh, uh, I mean, the the, the non-emission SYK is actually not the most general. I mean, it's pretty symmetric, uh, which is still, let's say, a particular case of non-emission. Now, what you're going to discuss is applying, it's apply only at the PT symmetric case, right? Uh... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that you only had PT symmetry when you consider two copies of non-Hermitian SYK that are related uh, under. Uh, okay, yeah, no, okay, yeah. So this is like studying yeah. one, it's like studying one of the dots. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Because then when you, I mean, even if you take the one dot and you do the, I mean, it, it, it breaks replica symmetry, so it goes to two replicas, but uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 okay, got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's something we're thinking about is, you know, what happens when you add uh, more symmetry to this completely structureless Hamiltonian, uh, um, especially PT symmetry, which has been, you know, which is known to be very physically relevant. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, yeah, one technical point is that for, for certain values of, of the number of fermions, uh, in this non-Hermitian SYK, it will it will be in the same symmetry class as the complex Geneva ensemble. Uh, 
for other values of number of fermions, it'll be in, you know, like the orthogonal or the, these other symmetry classes, which there are many. So the the two key points are are that O one one and the related OIJs are are very are very big. They're order n, um, and also the denominator is some random variable that has you know very large fluctuations. It's not it doesn't concentrate, um, and so these are the two keys uh, for uh, what we'll have as a, a violation of eigenstate thermalization. So we want to get a handle on what the eigenvectors of the Gini Bray uh, matrix are. And so these have the following structure. I, I mentioned this before, but it, you can uh, bring it to upper triangular form uh, using a unitary U, T, U dagger, where U is uh, like a Haar random matrix. Um, and T has uh, this form along the diagonal, we have these uh, we have these uh, eigenvalues just from the unit disk. And the TIJs in the upper uh, right triangle are IID uh, Gaussian variables. And these are uh, these Gaussian variables are, are totally independent from the U. So this is both a, a completely random unitary and completely random upper upper right corner. And so uh, now you can, uh, by going to this form and knowing some uh, knowing some properties of uh, of of Haar random unitaries, we can start to compute um, matrix overlaps or these matrix elements of of simple operators. So in particular, the the tool that we use, which is you know used all the time, is is this uh, Weingarten calculus, which if you take many uh, uh, U's and multiply them, and you take the you know U stars, and you integrate over the Haar measure of the unitary group, um, you get just a sum of delta functions times these, these Weingarten functions that have some explicit form. So, uh, yeah, so there's two there's two pieces. There's randomness in the U's and there's randomness in the TIJs. And what we're going to be doing is is doing uh, we're going to be um, looking at uh, or we're only going to be ensemble averaging over randomness in the U's. And so this is going to leave some some uh, remaining uh, distribution due to the randomness in the TIJs. So uh, from this form, we can look at, uh, we look at these sorts of overlaps, uh, these sorts of matrix elements. So the the important point is that uh, A, uh, sorry, that R and L, so we sandwich like this. We're not sandwiching uh, using R and R, we're sandwiching with L and R. Um, and by simple operator, uh, what we mean is um, an operator that is deterministic. Um, so it is completely independent of uh, the U's or the or the TIJs. This is like the the analog of a simple operator um, in normal ETH where you have some simple few body operator. It's something that's uh, like independent of the fine details of the of the Hamiltonian. And so using, our averages, we can find the expectation value, which is just the trace uh, divided by n, and uh, more interestingly, the the variance in the expectation value along the diagonal. So we've taken i and equals j, so they're both i, and along the di uh, the diagonal, uh, the the variance is quite large. Uh, we have, uh, say, the the connected piece. Uh, goes like this, and so a dagger a is can be order n, and o one one uh, is order n, as I as I mentioned before. Yeah, so so in particular, the uh, the fluctuations of um, the fluctuations are just as large as as the as the um, 
as the signal. I think I see something in the chat. Um, so we can we can conjecture. So this this was like expectation values with respect to u, and o one one was still some random variable. But we can conjecture the more the more general distribution of l i a r i. Um, where am I? Okay, there I am. And so if I subtract off this this uh, piece from the trace, uh, we conjecture it looks like some Gaussian random variable uh, 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 C uh, divided by gamma two. Um, and so on the left, this is a numerical check where we take A to be some fixed, uh, so some deterministic matrix and look at the distributions of the LIARIs, so of the of the expectation values. And in, and it, it seems to match uh, fairly well with with our uh, with our conjecture. An important piece of uh, random matrix theory is universality. So, uh, you know, are, are the things we're saying only uh, valid for the Ginebra ensemble or are they valid more generally? And so we do some numerical checks for some, you know, very different ensembles in the sense that uh, they're non non Gaussian ensembles. We like the Bernoulli ensemble. You're just taking random ones and and negative ones as your um, matrix elements. And the uniform ensemble, we can just you know uniformly um, uh, take the matrix elements of of uh, of the Hamiltonian just uniformly from you know zero to one. And these are the, have the same symmetries as the Geneva ensemble, but they're quite different. And they also uh, seem to have the, the same structure of expectation values along the diagonal. So do you have uh, intuition for this conjecture? For this conjecture? Uh, yeah. I'd say, let's see. So what do we, okay, we have... Uh, so it's 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 pretty much like taking this uh um so we have the these expectations so it's it's i'd say it's the simplest thing that agrees with uh these the the first moment and the second moment um the gamma 2 comes from this 011 uh the gamma two, and so easy. We have subtracted off this piece. Oh, okay. And um, and we've we've rescaled appropriately according to here, yeah. and then we just have... added some Gaussian uh, Gaussian variable, which is like the the simplest thing you could do. Uh, okay. Okay. So th that's my intuition. Yeah, thank you. Maybe it's... like if I can add one word like about yes. this. Yeah, just like I mean another way uh, to to guess this is that, so if you have a non-Hermitian matrix and you look at the hermitization, so this like uh, two by two block matrix, which is a scattered symmetry, so that's zero on the blocks and that's X star, uh, then you can say that a certain complex number Z is an eigenvalue of X if zero is an eigenvalue of these hermitized matrix. And for, so for that hermitized matrix, if you look at the, hermitization of x minus z where z is a complex number then this quantity you can compute uh, and you get basically this uh, square of a gaussian divided by gamma 2 and then if z is an again values of the non-hermitian matrix then the two quantities that you compute are the same so that's uh, also a way to guess uh, this thing uh, do you have intuition when hap what happened? What would happen if, uh, for example, in the SYK, you reduce uh, the the complex uh, the imaginary path uh, compared to the real path? What what happened with this uh, uh, result? Yeah, the, the crossover between this and the Hermitian case, which I I think you're pointing to, as as you tune the size of the non-hermeticity, is something 
we haven't explored, but we we've wanted to explore. I think it's it's interesting to, to right. Yeah, I mean, I I think as long as you take a, a little epsilon, say, I mean, if it's an order one change, then the or it would not change much. Only like some scaling would be a bit different. So yeah, if M is order the same order as J, is I right. Think. You have to take some different order to see something uh, qualitatively different. Okay, thank you. So I realized that uh, I looked at my clock and I think I'm starting to become over time. Uh, so let me try to uh, wrap up and then I'm I'm happy to to stay if any if anybody wants to hear more details. Um, so I won't talk about the uh, the off diagonal moment or the off diagonal moments, um, but it's it's just you know more of the same, and we get we get the the no suppression of the off diagonal moments. So let me just quickly uh, tell you about uh, this entanglement entropy. So for entanglement entropy, we have some choice on on what we mean by a density matrix. And if we wanted to uh, be like trace of uh, the density matrix times our operator to reproduce these expectation values that uh, I was uh, saying in the previous slides, then we want to take a, a non-Hermitian density operator. Uh, so a right eigenvector times a left eigenvector. And so this inherited non-Hermeticity means that this spectrum of, of rho will have uh, um, complex eigenvalues. So again, we take uh, the the reduced density matrix. Uh, so we're tracing over some system B, and uh, so at large n, we we have um, we can we can understand the structure of this density matrix, which in a simplified uh, case actually looks like this, which is just this maximally mixed piece, which is the piece that that uh, the density matrix looks like for Hermitian systems. And then you have this non-Hermitian piece where M is some, some you know, independent Geneva matrix times some random variable. So there's some uh, large correction to uh, the maximally mixed piece that you would get in the Hermitian case. Okay, so uh, that is the responsible for the no maximality of the entanglement entropy because it's like to have additional coherences. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is like off diagonal pieces. Yeah, the additional coherences, and it's uh, mm -hmm. and it's large. You can see that it's not suppressed. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so maximal entanglement, yeah, happens if if your density matrix is just this first piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let me move through it fairly quickly. Uh. But you, we can compute the spectrum of of such a matrix. Um. You can compute, uh, what, I guess, what people call the entanglement spectrum, and it's it's complex and has this very heavy tail. So um, it uh, basically the the eigenvalues uh, go aren't bounded to some you know finite region like they're in uh, in Hermitian case. They're between zero and one. Here they like take up the whole complex plane and they actually like decay uh, at uh, large eigenvalues. Um, polynomially, so so actually fairly slowly. And and then once you know the spectrum of a matrix, you can you can compute any entropy uh, quantity that you want. And the one we compute is is this definition of the von Neumann entropy, which instead of being you know trace row log row, it's trace of row log absolute value of row, uh, so as to get something. Uh, uh, so we get something real this way, and we get something uh, that uh, seems to make sense. So, so this definition of entanglement entropy has been uh, used a lot in uh, condensed matter physics for, especially for studying um, non-unitary uh, conformal field theories. This is the the definition of von Neumann entropy that appears to extract the the relevant physics there, such as like negative central charge. So, so we choose this. Uh, uh, it makes also just the log much much cleaner when you have lambda uh, complex. So is this uh, entropy here still real or not? It's 
Uh, it's not. Uh, it doesn't have to be real, but uh, but it's real if you have uh, if you have uh, like it's symmetry machine. about the 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 real axis, because yeah. the, the imaginary parts will will cancel each other. So so whenever you have the PT symmetry, then you have this right. There's a real. Yeah, I think it's real with. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. But you have the 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 pair of the complex. Uh, yeah. So so what so in this case what what's the physical meaning of this uh, complex entropy? I don't think there's it's been properly understood uh, what what it would means uh, what such an entropy means like there's no operational interpretation uh, for now all we know is that this definition of entropy for these non Hermitian density matrices. Uh, is extracting interesting physics, such as you know, in these, in many papers I haven't cited here, extracting uh, like central charge of uh, of uh, you know critical uh, non Hermitian systems, as, as one example, and mm. and here it seems to be giving uh, interesting physics in this in this constant uh, von Neumann entropy. Okay, thank you. But I think it's. You know, hopefully it does have some good operational meaning for it that would satisfy a quantum information theorist, uh, but that's uh, fairly opaque uh, at the moment. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Um, so the final thing is, uh, is it's eigenvalue dependent. I switched from lambda to z, uh, but this is just the eigenvalue. Uh, in the unit disk, and this is euler mascheroni constant, so it's just some constant, uh, which is I, what I'm calling area law. Um, you can also compute the variance. Um, so I'll, let me just end with uh, with just a couple plots of um, of what this page curve looks like. So the uh, as compared to some numerics. So we have these, these constant values for the entanglement entropy, which are the horizontal lines for different values of uh, the eigenvalue. And then uh, some just numerical data is the, is the dots. And we have a, a kind of upgraded version of the structure of the density matrix that takes into account uh, finite end corrections that gives a little bit of a, uh, an approach to this uh, area law, to, to this uh, constant value for, for small values of of uh, 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 for small values of n, uh, so you can see there is it's not you know exactly constant around the edges, but then it will become constant. So if I was able to you know simulate some huge system, this would just be constant for a long time and then dip back down to zero. Um, for for you could ask the same thing for non-Hermitian SYK, and you you'll find very similar behavior. Though the numerical coefficients are are of course different just as the numerical coefficients would be different when comparing the page formula to uh to uh the entanglement entropy in in uh hamiltonian systems okay i will end there and uh thank you very much for all the uh questions and attention thank you jonah for this uh, excellent uh, seminar uh, let us thank jonah And uh, we are open for questions. Uh, yes, uh, Zoom, please go. Uh, I have two questions, and one may be very stupid. But uh, one question is, uh, you say that uh, is, uh, so the entropy equal to constant, you say that is area law. The reason because you do think that because you, 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 you think of SIK as, as a uh, CFT uh, two, so basically the boundary is uh, is zero, right? Uh yeah. This is me abusing terminology. Uh, mm. I, by area law, I, I actually just meant that it's order one, because uh, there's no there's no locality in these in these models. Uh, so I I really just mean it's order one. I shouldn't have said area law, uh, but I, I'm contrasting it to something being extensive uh, okay. with sister cells. And the second stupid question is, uh, your advisor has a holographic entanglement entropy for SYK, of course. 
Um, do you think that something work with uh, non Hermitian? Um, so, so I, I guess I have yeah two comments. Uh, one is um. Yo. Okay, let me truncate to one comment is that uh which is mostly I I yeah, I don't know how this how this would work. I think this would this is a question I could have for uh Dario perhaps who's worked on uh like these non-hermitian SYK models and and what uh bulk gravity solutions look like. I don't know if you could do like a replica trick and and find something that yeah that that gives this. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that is the that is the point. I mean, you. I mean, you connect the fact that you have the replica trick, the replica breaking stuff is is suggesting that this is let's say related to a to a traversable wormhole uh, geometry. So that should be a computation of the of the entropy in the traversable wormhole tra uh, traversable wormhole uh, setup. Let's say. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it would be very interesting to connect to these actual um, like holographic models. Mm -hmm. okay, I have thank a you. comment, uh, which unfortunately we don't have today our uh, local expert on what I'm going to say, who is uh, Varinder, who is in vacation, so uh, we cannot be here. But somehow this, um, this, I mean, it's a very, let's say, bold comment. It's really, let's say, more like a, like a slogan than... Uh, but the fact that uh, in, in the non Hermitian case you get uh, extra coherences, to me, it looks a little bit, let's say, morally related to the phenomenon that in thermodynamics people call the noise induced coherence. I mean, there are cases in which the presence of noise, which I somehow want to, let's say, this is the slogan part. I mean, I want to say that the non the non hermitianity is something similar to the presence of additional noise. But yeah, there are phenomena in, let's say, let me say quantum thermodynamics in which people find that the presence of noise can introduce additional, additional coherences in your system. So to me, it looks, let's say, intuitively related uh, and maybe it could be interesting to to see if there are uh, let's say quantitative connections between between the two mm. um yeah as far as i understand you don't have an understanding of these additional coherences that you get it's just let's say a mathematical fact that in uh, in the Ginebra ensemble you get this extra piece this m that uh, that can be viewed as coherences right so I don't know. I would suggest that maybe along that lines one can can find uh, a physical understanding. But as I said, I, I have nothing more than just a slogan based on on an intuition. But yeah, it's nothing more than that. I mean, as Jonah said earlier, like I mean, this is like related to the fact that these overlap are big, right? And and this is because the non hermitian spectrum, I mean, this kind of reflects the fact that the non hermitian spectrum is very unstable. Like, if you have a little perturbation, then like, kind of big changes this related. I mean, that's why, I mean, these eigenvalues, eigenvectors are like, uh, they are so big. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know if this could be, that could be, yeah. I don't know. To be honest, I'm not really expert on this. I mean, as I said, unfortunately, our uh, local expert is in vacation. So I, I, I just mentioned, let's say, the, the keyword that is this uh, noise-induced coherence idea. But I'm not really an expert on that. So I, I cannot say much more than that. Yeah, it sounds interesting. I, I, I didn't know about this. Yeah, maybe we can chat more, uh, let's say, privately when, when I will have a better understanding of what I'm saying. Okay, do we have any other questions or comments? Seems not. So in this case, uh, let us thank Jonah again. Thank you, everyone. And thank you all for joining. Uh, with this, we conclude.